All right, I'm back and let's get rocking here. So the retirement step, we can remove a disc to our supply. Um, I think it largely dictates on whether or not I'm gonna have cards that you're gonna put discs. Um, you know what, I'm gonna remove this disc because the barbarians are are uh, not going to, I'm not gonna be able to do anything about those barbarians anytime soon. And uh, barbarians are, I don't think they're, they're not like, they don't actually, barbarians aren't active. They do things, they clog up spaces, you know, there's, there are things that you have to destroy, but they're, it's not like they have cards or do anything weird. Um, okay, so uh, so let's get rocking here. Uh, Purple did his thing. Remember, we're only allowed to remove one if we're going to remove any at all. And so, like, for example, Red could do the same thing, but Red has plenty of discs to put back on, so I'm not going to do that. And um, so uh, we're done. Uh, the AI never does this, by the way, so they're done. So now we do acquisition. So uh, just real quick again, one disc for every land settlement, one for every two shallow seas, one for every uh, civilization we're opposed to or next to, and then uh, for civilization and wonders. All right, so starting with Rome, uh, we get one for every settlement. So you can see Umbria has one. Oh, I forgot to resolve this. This would have been a one-to-one -one dead. So that one's done. So Aquitania is one. This is two. That's three. And then one over here in Greece is four. So we get four from that. And technically speaking, this is a settlement here. So we get five. Um, one, two, three, four, five. We are next to the Goths. So we get one for that. And we're next to Barbarians. So we get one for that. They do count as an opposing... Oh, do they? They're not a civilization. So I'm going to take the one away from the barbarians. So we get this many, and I'm putting it in my ready box. Now, let's not forget our bonus again. If there's a Roman city in or adjacent to Rome, we can draw a card or transfer two discs from the supply to the ready box. If no city is present, you may place one disc into Rome or a land area adjacent to Rome. So we can draw a card or transfer two discs from supply to ready. So right now I can choose to draw a card or take two more discs. Um, I have two more discs to take, so I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna take two discs. And I think I may have done that last turn wrong. I think I drew a card last turn and I don't think Rome had a city then. So I probably would have been forced to put my discs into Rome. I. I'm not going to go back and retcon that, but uh, just so you know, for those of you that are watching, I probably screwed that up. Um, okay, so now we go to the Eastern Empire. So let me check theirs real quick. Um, yeah, so uh, Eastern Empire is, again, one for every land settlement. So we have one, two, three, four... Five, six. So we get six. Two, three, four, five, six. And that's it. Now uh, we can choose to draw a card or take two more. And so we're going to take two more. Although these cards are not bad at all. Um, so now we get to Gaul. And they're easier, they're just taking 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Now, one thing I want to check is the uh, the C zone stuff. Um,
Okay, so even though C zones really aren't a thing, you still need C zones if you want to use them. So for example, if the Goths want to go after this gold down here, they're going to have to go across C zones. And the same with, um, with Persia. If they want to go after Troy, they have to go over C zones. So uh, that's what I just wanted to make sure because I have a feeling that that's going to happen here. Okay, so in turn order, we place our discs. And so this, by the way, is when we would get to draw a card or get two more discs. I just did it early. Um, so we have our discs and Rome, I am going to bump back up to four because I'm pretty sure Rome's gonna get attacked again. And then uh, Spain here, I'm bumping back up to four. And then Carthage. I'm gonna bump back up to three. I'm not gonna do four, because the barbarians don't actually move. At least, not that I'm aware of. And I, if I screwed up the barbarians, I totally apologize. Let me, I'm gonna just check one more time, but I'm pretty sure the barbarians are just, they clog up spaces. See, it says, uh, when an NPC needs to do things to barbarians, uh, you know, there's rules for that, but the barbarians themselves are not a civilization, so they don't, they don't attack you per se. They just get put on from cards and then, you know, other players do things with barbarians to uh, screw you up. And see, and then for this scenario, there's actually a barbarian rule. We're not playing this, but so we could choose one of the following two options. Uh, the two empires cannot play a card that would place barbarians onto the map. Um, and then if the Western Empire draws a card that would place one, they immediately give it to the Goths and then collect two talents from the supply. If the Eastern Empire draws a card that would place them, they give that card to the Persians and put two, collect two talents from supply. So that's a, and see how it says uh, 9.2 Pro Invader? It's an optional rule that you can play as that uh, this would benefit the invaders. And then there's some pro-Roman ones as well. And then you can see, you know, so you can add these. These are all optional rules that you can add to this scenario to make it, you know, easier or harder, a little bit more involved, etc. So I chose none of those because I just wanted to understand the base game as best as I could. And, you know, I'm classic Jeff. I screw things up. So um, uh, anyways... Just wanted to let you know that there is stuff like that uh, if you wanted to get involved in that. So we still have three more to place. And what I uh, am learning is a viable strategy here is we want to prevent them from even getting to your gold cities, right? So if I place that there and then over here, uh, place one, and then uh, place one here, that slows them down. And uh, you'll see why in a second. So, uh, well actually I'll explain it now. The reason why it slows them down is they can't move through an area to the next area until they have at least as many tokens as you. So, um, so here, actually I'm gonna make this just a city like that. So in order for them to attack this gold area, he has to put at least two tokens here before he can even put his first token there. So I'm forcing him to place tokens in areas that aren't giving him points. Um, although here, if I make a city, they do get to, to, to loot the city if they actually win there. So I do have to be a little bit careful. In fact, I don't think I want to make that a city for that reason. So I'm going to go ahead and um, maybe we'll just put that there like that. Because <laughs> if I make that into a city, that's, um, that's giving them... Uh, they have the ability to sack the city then because as soon as I put that third disc there, it does become a city. Um, okay, so now we move to the Eastern Empire, which it feels like they're struggling, but they're really not. I mean, in terms of score, we're actually doing okay with this game. Uh, but I am for sure putting three here in the Delta. And I'm going to do a similar thing in the Sinai Peninsula. And... Uh, I still have four more 
to place. And I think what I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna make it easy for them to get to Troy. So I'm gonna start placing, I'm gonna make settlements so I can get more tokens back. Um, and then, uh, yeah, we're gonna at least, at least uh, have a presence in the area, even though I'm not gonna contest them. Okay, so that's them. So now we go, I'm gonna go ahead and just do the Persians first since the camera's already pointing this way. So we know we're gonna make this two, three, four, and I have to match that in order to be able to do that. Uh, actually, no, I don't. I already was here so I could do it. Um, and then we have a whole bunch more we can still play. And I think uh, we're going to go for Troy. So here we're gonna put two, and then one there, and then one, and then one, and then we have one that we can put into Troy itself. It won't cause a battle or anything, but it means that next turn we can try to take Constantinople. So uh, that's them. Now we go to the Goths. And so uh, they don't have a presence in Spain, so they have to do at least one more here. And then they're gonna do one, two, three, four here. And they only have four more left. So actually they may not even go for Spain. Let's back up a second. Uh, they're gonna do two here and two there. And yeah, I'm gonna take the four out of Spain and put the four here. Uh, Cause they wanna go for Rome first. And then um, they're at least gonna match here so they can keep Spain in their sights. So actually Goth was, has been pushed back pretty hard. So that's pretty cool. Um, all right, so we're done with that. Uh, resettlement, no one's gonna do that. Uh, we did our deployment, so now we're in the card phase. Okay, so starting with us, we have uh, the Pirate Haven card there. Still, uh, let's see, select a city, remove one disc from that city, then remove one disc from each adjacent land area occupied by the owner. Um, card except an event negate that card so we have that take two cards at random from an opposing civilization that has at least two cards in hand keep one and return the other then you and that opposing civilization each get a talent oh, that's interesting so let's see if they have any negate cards the AI uh, they don't at least Gaul doesn't so Gaul's got a lot of decent cards and the same with, with uh, Persia they don't so there's no negate cards. So there's gonna be a lot of shenanigans here. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I'm gonna take two cards at random from an opposing civilization that has at least two in hand and, um, and then uh, gain a talent. Since I get to see their cards, I'm gonna to try to make this a little more fair. I'm gonna draw a card and if it's even, it'll be the Visigoths. But you know what? I'm Rome. I don't care about the Persians. It's the Visigoths I want to hurt. So I'm going to be taking two of their cards. I think that's a more fair. I was going to randomize it, but I realized, you know what? Persia doesn't, isn't a threat to me. So we're going to shuffle. We're going to draw two, and I get to keep one, and I give one back. So I'm just going to take these two middle ones, and we got a competition card, and... Yeah, I'm happy with that. So we played our card, now we're done. So now we go to the Eastern. Must choose four discs on the map and return them to the supply. Ooh, that's brutal. Um, I'm gonna do religious fervor. I wasn't expecting them to attack. I'm gonna select Troy, choose a disc color occupying that area, add one disc of that color into each adjacent area. <clears throat> well, no, I'm not gonna do that yet. 
Here's do this one. Select a civilization and they must choose four discs and return them to the supply. And I'm gonna choose, of course, Persia. So they have to reduce four discs. And this is where it gets interesting. So what's the AI gonna do when they have to remove There is an AI priority, by the way, when, when this happens. I'm just trying to find it. Hmm. Maybe it's in the solitaire section. Give me a second. 